Yeah. Let me hear you sing. Yeah. Hey, hey. You see, I do what you can't, man. I'm not an ant, man. Come through. I'm doing shit that you can't stand. Do it all the time, man. I ain't, I ain't spirit, so you can go on and cry, man, because you was not a man. You was going to die. All right. You know what? I never <laughs> think I need to write these bars in advance. Uh, <laughs> um, What's going on, y'all? Y'all know like what it is, man. It's another day, another dollar, another blurred, another topic. Let's discuss this blurred stuff. And yes, if you ain't know, it is another weekend of a Marvel release. Specifically, we is talking about Ant-Man. Ant-Man is back, y'all, and he don't got to win. He just got to make sure we both lose. We're going to chat a little bit of that. And a couple other things we got on the dock. We want to go ahead and get caught up to speed for those of y'all that did not see our review on Monday where we discussed the last two episodes of Last of Us, which I keep accidentally calling This Is Us. But sometimes it be feel like This Is Us. We're going to chat on that and definitely what happened with my man Sam and them. Henry, bro, it's all good, man. We're going to chat, chat, chat. Um, there's also a couple other things going on. Like we discussed last week, the prospect of Luke Cage getting canceled. So it's so gritty right now, but they talk about, uh, oh, there's right wing nuts, quote unquote, that we don't want to put this out just out of fear that they may trip. Hey, come on, it's tough. And I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed in my man Qui-Gon. Liam Neeson is out here trying to shame Star Wars fans saying, uh, I think that there's too many spinoffs and it's hurting the franchise. Let's discuss. Look who's going to be the leader of the Thunderbolts. L and Red Hope is still going to be new with Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones, we got a Spider-Man 4 plot finally taking place. Kevin Feige, give us that stuff. Take my money immediately. And I am legend. Will this be the one movie that could revive Will Smith's reputation? I don't know. Before we get into the Ant-Man, before we get into all of the blurred spirit, I want to introduce y'all to somebody we have as a special guest today. This gentleman is an award-winning cosplayer himself. I'm not even going to sit here and go into all of the dope stuff he does. Let's just say dude is a big deal. But before we even start with the introductions, you know we got to have our homegirl go ahead and bring us in. What's up, Yvette? We know you're in my dad, the bounty hunter, and we know you got a bunch of projects, but uh, can you tell the people what it is? I love yeah. the new Blurred Order. You should too. Mm. <laughs> Let me get all this 10 p Wang. All niggas rapping about the same old thing. I've been coming through with the same old gang. Ain't shit changed, except mine got a name. Got it out the mud, but we got no stains. Cold ass ninja with a gold ass chain. The girl call me daddy, not my government name. Money on my mind, got them bands on my brain. Let me tell y'all about a nigga I know. The nigga say clean, so he always got hoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you is a real Marvel fan, you've been seeing this movie Thursday. If you was a real, real Marvel fan, you flew out to the premiere like our homeboy, black gay comic geek and fantastic Frankie, who will be with us next week. Hallelujah. Saw it. And if you was a real fan, you definitely didn't leave before the credits came on. What's happening, y'all? Y'all already know what it is. Let's go ahead and do our pleasant introduction. It is me, your boy, Blurred Man himself, the real Vince Taylor, live from the Spider-Man cave. Got my little Ant-Man thing, too. What's up, AMC Theaters? You know you got my subscription. We are joined also by Tyrone, I think. You better call Tyrone. Hey, he looks refreshed. He looks like he got a good night's sleep. Uh, We also got Stephanie, who looks like... <laughs> She she had a lot. She is she's she's traveling this morning. Look at happy. Steph is on the train. Uh, uh, where are you headed, Steph? We'll talk to you in a little bit. Uh, we got Yaz, uh, of course. Happy Black History Month, Yaz. We got Bad Ty in the building. One time for Ty with the sound effects. Appreciate you pulling up, homeboy. And of course, you know we got our lit major Nolly in the building. Al, what's popping, Miss Nolly? And we all is here, man. But I wanted to quickly introduce somebody that I actually am a fan of this gentleman right here is a cosplayer like a real cosplayer not a costumer not a halloween dress up person an award winning cosplayer with sponsors and all that and if you have internets which obviously you do if you're watching this because that wouldn't make no sense what you watching this on beta it don't make no sense this gentleman right here does all kind of cosplay and one of my favorites is omni man if you remember from Invincible, but he is not restricted to any type of cosplay. I mean, he even did Doug. I mean, come on, bro. This ain't even yeah. Doug. That's Roger Klotz. My man even does Link, and I can sit here and go on and 
on for days. Uh, Killmonger, for those of us that are Black Panther fans, and I happen to like some of the skits he does. Like this right here, I thought was kind of cool, man, how he was going up against Homelander. <laughs> Uh, big, big, big things going on in this gentleman's world, man. A con aficionado, and I want us to help welcome to our platform for the first time and hopefully not the last, Mr. Venture Brothers. Uh oh, I wasn't supposed to, I wasn't supposed to, uh, I was supposed to uh, edit it a little better than that, <laughs> but yeah, it's Mr. Venture Brothers himself, also known as. Alan, and we're gonna talk to Alan right now before he goes off and does bigger, better things. What's going on, Mr. Alan, sir? What's happening, man? Hey, what's good? What's good with you, man? Thank nah. you for having me, of course. Nah, nah, thank you for pulling up, bro. We know you a busy man and got a lot of things going on, so it's a big deal that you took a couple moments. And please, you know, bear with me while I arrange some things here. You know, we play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, but um, yeah, real quick, cool. man. Um, listen, I know that uh, uh, you um, uh, uh, have a lot going on today and, and, and um, you know, so we don't necessarily have you for as long as we probably would like. So hopefully you'll come back. But for right now, I was just hoping we could maybe just wrap with you a little bit about your journey. First and foremost, I, for one, am curious about your nerd start. You know what I'm saying? Like, did you actually grow into nerddom? Have you always been what they call a nerd? And if so, what were your first nerd loves, your nerd kinks, if you will? Like me, Spider-Man fan all day. That's my love from the get. What about you, bro? What is it that brought you in to the spirit? What's your major love of nerd, if you will? All right. So um, I've been pretty much a nerd all my life. I just wasn't the conventional nerd. Like, mm -hmm. like for me, I grew up in Chicago, South Side. So everybody okay. in the hood, everybody in my hood especially, watched Dragon Ball Z. So I never, hey. like, a lot of the times when I hear stuff about people saying, like, nerds got bullied and stuff, and, you know, uh, it was real taboo to be a nerd. Like, I feel like it's levels to it. So I used to watch Dragon Ball Z. I used to watch X-Men. Everybody in the hood fucked with Spider-Man. You know, yeah. um, I was a gamer. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, like 2K and Live and stuff like that. And I used to play a lot of RPGs. Everybody played Mario. So... You know, I, I, I've been a nerd pretty much all my whole life, you know. Okay, okay. Did you feel uh, as you were not bullied, you know, because you probably had a six-pack in the third grade. Uh, <laughs> like you were not <laughs> uh, uh, But did you, did you feel like it was something that you were closeted about? Because like in the hood, like you say, folks would fuck with Dragon Ball Z. But did they really go deep into comics? I feel like Marvel movies have made it a little more acceptable. You know what I'm saying? To come out with your nerdiness. Was it a gradual outing or was you just always the guy that you are today? Did you, you know, you know what I mean? No, no, no. I'll be real. If 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 I didn't know you like watched cartoons or anything like that, I probably wouldn't talk to you about, it. especially like with anime, because especially when I was growing up, it wasn't a lot of anime out there. But if um somebody said something or like wore a T-shirt or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? That's when I would say something. But usually, if I didn't know for sure you were into it, I didn't really talk to you about it. Yeah. So, so all right. That makes sense. Now, when you were at Hampton, which my man went to Hampton, all right? And uh, we ain't going to hold the fact that he a kappa against him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. It, oh, it, it, man. It's all good. You know, my, you and my uncle is kappas. Yeah. And y'all pretty ass all niggas. Day. Go around yeah, doing your little stepping and shit, and your little shimmying and shit. You know what I'm saying? Say, <laughs> shimmy. <laughs> right, now shimmy. Yeah, we shimmy. Okay, Here shimmy. Okay, my apologies. So, okay, I'm about to get beat with a candy cane in this bit. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering, like, is that something like on campus? Was you was you cosplaying even then, or was it something that happened a little more after you uh you got done with that with Hampton? Nah. So you know, I didn't start cosplaying until 2017. So I didn't know really what cosplay was until uh, 2016. And that's when, you know, I had uh, got back from a deployment and uh, I booked the room at the Marriott down in Atlanta. Got back from my 30 day R&R &R from my deployment. Me and my best friend and my brother, we all stayed there because we were going to chill in Atlanta that weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, I accidentally booked the same dates as Dragon Con weekend. 
So I didn't know what Dragon Con was or anything like that. But when I was down there, you know, that's when I met a bunch of cosplayers, met a bunch of people in the nerd community. And um, that's how I got introduced to cosplay. So at Hampton, there was now they have like anime groups and stuff at Hampton. But when I was there, none of that existed. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So unless I went to somebody's room, like I said, unless they were wearing a T-shirt or got a poster up or some, you know. Now the one the one way you could tell, especially with like a lot of people who are Greek, if they got like a console, if they got a console, you know, whether it's PlayStation or something, and they're a gamer, that's when it's like, okay, okay, they might fuck with it, you know. But like I, I said, there's levels to it because people could be gamers, but they only play yeah. sports games. Yeah, you know, so you never know. Yeah, man, it's 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 a whole thing. So, all right, my next questions are are kind of about, and don't let me listen. Don't uh, one thing we do, we hold up our hands, we ask questions. Listen, guys, don't let me hog uh, the uh, uh, you know the the pulpit here. <laughs> Feel free to jump on in. Um, but uh, my questions come with regard to your cosplay selections. I happen to notice, like you said, you're an anime fan. Uh, I saw you do some Chainsaw Man stuff. And I'm still telling y'all, y'all sleeping on Chainsaw Man, bro. Like, it, it, look, it may be dubbed. I mean, it may be subbed. And I know Yaz, Yaz got this thing where she can't watch sub shit. Like, she, <laughs> it has to be dubbed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, mm. I don't I don't understand that, but it is what it is. But I'm just curious, like, what is it that makes you decide I'm gonna do this character? Like. One of the things that I thought was hella dope when I saw you cosplaying was that you don't just kind of like I do uh, stick with. And we discussed this before folks that you just look like already. You know what I'm saying? Like even like, yeah, check this out. My man, <laughs> my man did your boy from Encanto. Now, there's some there's, some, there's, there's a little bit of uh, some, some Photoshop going on here. But like my point is there's no limits. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not like staying within what it is that he looks like. So I'm just asking, like, what is it that makes like is what is it that that draws you to a character and lets you know, hey, you know what? I can do this person. And who are some of your favorite cosplay uh out or cosplayers uh, who are the, some of the things that you like to cosplay the most um so when it comes to cosplay selection usually it has to be a character that i resonate with somehow if i like the character or if i thought the character was just that funny or that cool or that powerful yeah. then i want to do that character you know um a lot of times i don't always like to do characters that everybody else does as well if I see a great deal of people doing that character, I'll probably wait until like the like popularity of that characters die down a little bit, and then I'll do it. And then I'll usually put like an Afrocentric feel to it. Mm. Um, as far as my favorites to cosplay, you know, Mario would definitely be probably my favorite to cosplay because I can just act as goofy as I want and you know have fun with that as much as possible. Um, of course, I like to do links. You know, I did a lot of different versions of links. Um, another one of my favorites uh, would probably definitely be Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. I got a quick question for you. Please, mm -hmm. please, Tyrone. Uh, if you had one, one cosplay you could do, budget is not an issue, time is not an issue, you had unlimited of both, uh, what would your dream cosplay be? Um, if I had like time and resources to do whatever cosplay I wanted, I'd probably do. Uh, I'd probably do Reinhardt from Overwatch because oh, he's got a he's got that giant suit. So yeah. I would probably try to build that giant suit if I had like the resources and stuff. But that's that's thousands of dollars. But mm -hmm. if I <laughs> if I felt like spending that much, then I'd probably do Reinhardt because that's I always thought he was a dope character. His suit looks amazing. So yeah, I'll probably do that. You hear that Overwatch sponsorship opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nolly's an Overwatcher, if I'm not mistaken. I she, she am symmetry main. Oh, okay, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Yo, I'm gonna flip that question back to Tyrone. Who would you pick, homeboy, if you had unlimited budget? Uh, unlimited budget, uh, unlimited time. I would probably do Apocalypse, like a really good Apocalypse. Ooh, ooh okay. I don't see Apocalypse. I only seen one Apocalypse too. Yeah, you got to do it right. If you do a podcast, yeah, you got to yeah. do it right. And that's going to take a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, since you asked me, I'll answer. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I would do, <laughs> oh, I would do War Machine. Like a legit, mm. full oh. War Machine. Cannons and all. Eyes with LEDs. 
all of that. But I don't know if I need a PPP loan for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> type of thing. Yeah, because they they got some that are already built that you could buy, but them like that's like five thousand five racks. You know, I don't know if you want to do all that. Nothing. It's nothing. All right, Tyrone. All right, cool, man. Well, listen, moving along a little bit, man. I did want to ask you because now that you are out there and you are an award winning cosplayer, uh, you're kind of merging into the cosplay community, if I may speak, if I may say so, specifically as it pertains to blurs like us and folks that look like us. I couldn't help but notice this. Uh, of this picture right here and we discussed this a little bit and here's some other cosplayers i'm just asking like what's it like to be a mix and possibly even considered a leader in the the black cosplay community and uh um you know like what what is you know some of the perks that may come with it well um what it's like for me basically i want everybody black to come up so uh one person asked me a question before in an interview and they asked me um do I feel like I need to be the best black cosplayer? Do I feel like I'm the best black cosplayer? And I told them, like, I don't even think in those terms. I mm. think in terms of being the best cosplayer. As mm. far as black people are concerned, I want us to all come up together. Because if you see the other, like, other basically demographics in the cosplay community, especially, like, white people, mm -hmm. they all work together. You know, mm -hmm. of course, they're competing against each other, but they're also working together. And they're working together with sponsorships. They're working together with opportunities and they're getting all of them, you know? Right. So for us, if I were to, you know, be on that, like, Oh, okay. I want to come up by myself and I want to be, you know, I want to just build up my brand only. Then it, even that route, it still would hit a glass ceiling. It still mm -hmm. wouldn't work, you know, but for black people, I feel like we're so talented, especially with black women in the cosplay community. Like, I don't think black women in the cosplay community get, like as much credit as they deserve because you know they're doing face paint makeup they're doing they're building the props too they're you know what i'm saying they're doing sewing so they do a whole lot and i think that that doesn't get recognition so i want all of us to come up together and them to get that recognition and for us to get all of these opportunities and um as far as me being a leader um i if possible i'd want to facilitate that mm -hmm. So y'all heard that, right? He said he want to bring us out with him. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you see a lot of times, I don't really turn down a lot of collabs. Of course, you know, not all of them get posted because it's a quality thing. But right, right, usually right. I am down to do collabs with people with big followings, people without big followings. It's just a quality thing. If the quality's good enough, it'll get posted, definitely. You know, okay. so right. like I'll try to, you know, because me and uh, Papa Bear out of Chicago, we created Chicago PLC cosplayers. And basically, back when I was living in Chicago, I'm in Houston now, but back when I was living in Chicago, we used to have a lot of events where we were teaching children and even adults, you know, how to build props, how to paint, okay. how to do their own photography. So the opportunities are there. And we weren't real bougie about like who we'd work with. You know, pretty much if you're black, we'll work with you. Hey, hey, now he's speaking my language, man. Well, listen, our time is wearing thin. I have a few last questions. Don't let me stop anybody if anybody else has any. Um, at one time for Ty, he looks so interested. Uh, my lord, uh, <laughs> Ty is uh, my bad, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, I have a few questions. So, as I alluded, alert, alluded, alluded to, uh, alluded, alluded, you got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, my man does all kind of cosplays like i said some of my favorites are the ones that you wouldn't expect i mean who would have thought to to freaking do roger klotz right yeah. i mean that's completely <laughs> um but you also did speak about how uh one of the videos that i saw you post that caught my attention is how you said if i'm not mistaken and i'm quoting every time you cosplay somebody black you get met with racism and now we're in black history month and I was just wondering, like, what that's like. As a matter of fact, I think I have the quote right here. Hold on, just one second. Every time I cosplay a character that's not black, I deal with racism. And so, like, whenever you 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 post these things, and obviously you're gonna—I mean, listen, when you get a following, you're gonna have to deal with trolls. That's just the way it goes. You know what I'm saying the whole object of free speech means people can love you, they can hate you, but they can express right. it. But I mean, like, how do you deal with that? Do you let it affect you? Does it ever fuck with you a little bit? Or is it just one of the things you're like, look, man, just just keep it moving. Um, I, you know, I mean, how, how do you kind of deal with 
the no the notion that as soon as you put on uh a outfit like one for omni man that you know for a fact already off rip that you're gonna get called the n-word get made fun of what, what's your your um strategy for dealing with this as an issue um so usually i would tell people usually myself personally i don't even respond to it. i usually i'll just delete it and block on that specific post though that specific video that went viral in like two days so it had like over a million views in two days it had like you know it had like thirty thousand likes or something like that and um there was about i want to say over it was i think we counted to 124 comments calling me nigger. Oh so that God. was the most that was the most it had ever happened on one post because it, it happens frequently every time i cosplay a character that's not black but on that one specifically, it was over a hundred comments calling me Nick. So that's why, you know, of course, I respond to it on that video. Um, oh, let me let me delve into that real quick. Hold on. So, like, there's no context, just nigger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just no, it'll, like, it'll be it'll be nigger. Then some of them be Omni nigger. Then some of them be nigger man. Oh my god. So yeah, yeah, it's all types of variations. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, so. Normally, though, I would tell people, look, delete it and block them or restrict them and, you know, delete the comment, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, keep it moving because you can't let that consume. You You know, we got as black people, we got enough to deal with than to let that type of bullshit affect you. Don't let that slow down what you want to do, because I had a lot of people comment like, you know, this is why I don't want to get into cosplay because they're Man. scared of the racism involved. And I told them, like, look, you can't if you let racism stop you from doing something. There's going to be a lot of things you can't do. Don't let racism restrict anything that you're trying to do. You know, mm -hmm. like, and because those dudes over there, like, I, I first debuted Omni Man back in 2021. So Amazon Prime shared me, you know, um, the creator, the, uh, what's his name? Um, Matt Kirkman, the one who created Walking Dead know. and the Invincible comic, he reshared me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all these accolades already happened before this video. This video is fairly recent. It was just like a month ago. So for all of them to like say all that negative stuff, you know what I'm saying? Call me negative and, you know, be like, oh, and you know, some people went really deep, man. They're like, oh, it's monkey cosplaying all this. I'm like, yeah, but the creator of the, the comic itself literally shared me. You know what I'm saying? The Amazon Prime shared me. You know what I'm saying? It's It's just like it's like, all right, you guys can talk as much trash as you want, but obviously I did something right. So Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, listen, I only got a couple more quick questions for your homeboy. But uh, just so you know, uh, we stand with you and we ready to fight uh, the comment section. Uh, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> now, appreciate I mean, Steph or Ninja Warriors. I mean, I ain't saying they're going to pull up every single time. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be so, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we, we pull up to the comments sometimes when it's necessary. You feel me? Um, <laughs> so, next, next two questions, real quick questions, man. What's next uh, for Venture Brothers cosplay? And... Set, uh, to to end of that question, where does the name come from? I mean, I was a fan of Venture Brothers. I watched Adult Swim. Uh, I, I fucks with them. Um, uh, and and why is it that you chose that as your name? And then what is next for Mr. Allen, aka Venture Brothers cosplay? <laughs> so um, it's actually funny, man, because my fan base they have been they have been going upside my head about not cosplaying anything from Venture Bros for years. So. Um, the way it started was my brother, like I told you guys, I was in the military when I first found out about uh, cosplay and stuff and cons. Mm -hmm. So my brother, my little brother, he was the one who created the Venture Bros page. So my brother thought it was cool that me and him start cosplaying together and we'll cosplay as Venture Bros. You know, mm -hmm. and he thought that would be a cool name to kick things off. But um, right when I got out the military, and moved back to Chicago, my brother got into this grad school program. So then he left and went to grad school. So it was like, okay, do I keep this going or do I shut it down? And I was like, all right, I'll just do it. I'll just hold it down till he's done with grad school. And then he could come and you know cosplay whenever, and we'll just kick it off together again. Um, as you see, that didn't really happen. <laughs> but 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 you know, um, I kept with it, and you know, it just kept growing. Okay. Very okay. Selfish of your brother to go and educate. Like I, 
don't don't leave cosplay for education, y'all. Go and <laughs> how dare you pick education over do getting dressed up in characters we love. Yeah, uh, all like, hey man, this is your idea. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. All right. Well, um, I guess the, the follow-up is do you see this going somewhere to maybe movies, maybe TV shows? Do you want to do any acting? Do you want to produce anything? Do you I mean what do you what do you see like if Venture Brothers cosplay is keeps on the trajectory is going right now before we let you go? I mean, what do we look forward to seeing in the next couple years or or, or you know a few years down the line? Um so uh, piggybacking off of your last question when you said what's next for me, and I think that plays into this question. Um, for me, cosplay is more of the enjoyment. Um, my favorite times cosplaying are with groups of people that I'm, I'm cool with. So that's my favorite aspect of it. So as far as the business side, it's doing very well on the business side, but as far as an overarching okay. goal, like, you know, I'm trying to become an actor or a voice yeah. actor. If those opportunities open themselves up and it happens, I'm more than grateful for it. If it doesn't happen, I'm still more than grateful for what I have been able to accomplish with cosplay. You know, I never thought that I would be in magazines before. I never yeah. thought that I would have, you know, guest spots and calendars. I never thought that the hobby of cosplay, I would be able to generate enough a month to where the hobby pays for itself. I mm. never knew those things were a possibility. And now that they are, have come to life, you know, anything on the table that's, you know, a dream like acting or, you know, voice acting, if those things happen, I would love it. If they don't happen, like I said, I'm still grateful. Uh, as far as what's next for me, um, I do have a voice acting opportunity that, that, <laughs> that I did get. So um, I will be doing that in the near future. I can't disclose exactly um, who that's with or what shows that that's with. But, um, yeah, I do have a voice acting opportunity that's uh, come through. Um, and then just a lot of um, guesting spots. Like I've been posting just a lot, you know, con guesting spots and, you know, a different um, few different like magazine articles and I am supposed to appear on like a, a couple of shows, just like web shows. They're not like, I don't think they're actual like television shows, but like one documentary I'm supposed to be in. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a few big things, uh, definitely new things to my brand. So I look forward to it and, you know, and I'm, I'm grateful for it pretty much. Congratulations. Well, listen, uh, congrats. Oh, thank you guys. Appreciate congrats it. Congrats on that, uh, on the secret. Uh, since they don't want to break the rules, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Uh, but we certainly happy, man, because we know when you make it, we make it. Because he said we coming with him, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Don't I want to come home, up man. together. Because if we all come up together, <laughs> hey, man, that's our own network, our own. If we could create our own community, our own cosplay community, mm. you know, like we have it kind of, you know, through voice we have our own, but to officially have our own community and like our own opportunities. That's when that's when we've truly made waves in their community. Mm, mm, spoken like a true leader, man. Listen, yeah. I know you've got things to do today, but y'all heard him on tape. He said he gonna pull up again. So next time we're gonna give the full interview treatment. We're gonna find out <laughs> what your superheroes are, what your favorite anime is, what your favorite 90s cartoon theme show is. Uh, all that good stuff, man. We're gonna chat. We will let you go to the wild, man, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to learn more about you, uh, Alan. And once again, we do hope that you will uh come back and check us out again, homeboy. Hey man, appreciate you guys for having me again. Nah, no problem, man. That's Venture Brothers Cosplay, y'all. Y'all go follow that, man. I mean, you know, you can never have too many followers, never have too many fans. So please pull up and welcome our new friend to the show, Mr. Venture Brothers Cosplay. We're going to go ahead and let you get on with your day, homeboy. Look, the boy is good, man, and he brought up some good points. I'm going to go ahead and let him uh, He brought up some good points because, you know, we was going to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp next. And uh, he said that he was reading uh, some of the some of the reviews about the movie. We, I, I didn't want to talk to him because he ain't seen it yet. So I ain't want to, you know, spoil it with him. But you know, everybody here except Yes has seen it, and Yes says she don't mind the spoilers. Um, so he brought up a good. As a matter of fact, real quick, on your way out, 
what was that that you said uh uh that well that was a good question that like you you asked about you said if so and so wasn't it's just gonna pose that question oh damn i, I oh he might have bounced i didn't already yeah I, you know, I didn't already, <laughs> no he's still here it's like weird because you see him in there but he's not there and it's like a whole thing you know so i think, I think that's maybe our computer just has wishful thinking it is what it is i will pose the question for him once again he basically said well let's just lead off this next segment uh we all of us with the exception of yes like i said did get a chance to check out the ant-man and the wasp quantum mania part three uh, uh starring you know, pain the conqueror movie and um i'm just curious man before we uh, um, even delve into uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, what we did, um, 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 uh, 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 you know, love or hate about the movie. Um, by the way, spoiler alert, we will be getting into spoilers, not just yet, but here pretty soon. So if you haven't seen it, don't want it to be spoiled. i um, not saying you have to leave, but don't blame us. Um, <laughs> so we just want to uh, uh, ask real quick, when I pull this down, uh, this, this, this flyer, this, this, this um, um, poster, just give me a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't give me a meh if whatever two thumbs up if you loved it i'm gonna pull it down in three two one oh wow yeah you ain't even see it yet yeah just, just, just like paul rudd bro she's just a paul rudd fan man and she gonna love it anyway so you got two so okay so ty is that one thumb up without is that an intentional one thumb and not two thumbs no, nah, I just have my other hand on the, on the, on the Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, it's a family show, homeboy. You know, I don't know what your other hand is. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we got two thumbs up from Tyrone. We got one thumb up from Nolly. Nolly, is that just one thumb up or is that? Okay. Uh, well, let's let's talk to the optimist, Tyrone. So you evidently loved the movie, bro. What you love about it, homeboy? Yeah, uh, I had a great time watching this movie. It, when, you know me, when, when a comic book movie is fun, like that's already just like, you're killing it already. So it was one of the most fun Marvel movies that I've seen. It was uh, goofy at times, uh, you know, not, won't get into spoilers, but MODOK was uh, better and funnier than I could have imagined. That, yes. to me, they nailed it. I absolutely loved it. And I know it's kind of divisive and we'll talk about it, but uh, I yeah. thought it was great. Uh, just. The, the, the characters, the setting, the, the love, the quantum realm, love the design of creatures and and uh, and people and costumes and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, you know Kang was amazing. Jonathan Majors absolutely killed it. Uh, we'll get more into him, but uh, there was a lot of it. I, I loved a lot of this. Uh, the ending was a, a the ending wasn't perfect in my opinion, but I see what they were doing, so I'm like, all right, I had a great time, so this is cool. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair, that's a fair criticism. What about you, Nali? Uh, you feel the same way? Uh, on point, on par with your expectations? Uh, the comedy was there. I don't know what people, the critics, they crazy because it wasn't, <laughs> I, was, I went into it expecting it to be bad because of mm. what everyone was saying, but it's, first of all, it's Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. This is his first, like, substance storyline, so it wasn't, it wasn't like, end game civil war but mm. i'd say like it rounds maybe the bottom half of my top 10. the oh, comedy wow. was great it was timed perfectly bill murray great addition okay <laughs> um jonathan majors yes daddy like <laughs> respectfully it was giving it gave what it needed to to start this phase okay all right all right ty what about you homeboy what you think? I thought it was really good. I thought visually it looked, I mean, it looked marvelous. I mean, some of those, those marvelous. wide screen shots. Well, yeah, one of those, some of those um, wide, wide screen shots was just like, I was like, wow. Like when they first came into, you know, the, the um, quantum realm and, you know, just going through the, the uh, process of traveling through the, the, the quantum realm um, and then just seeing, you know, the different, uh, the different things that you see once you get there um it was just beautiful um as far as like the acting i thought everybody did a great job michael douglas uh superb michelle pfeiffer i mean i was like michelle you still got it <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so yeah yeah michelle pfeiffer did a great job um paul rudd was his very funny self and and i, I appreciated it and ant-man is now like you know one of my one of my he's up there he's up there I, I i think he's one of my favorite 
characters, not necessarily favorite superheroes, but favorite characters. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, let me ask Steph if she's hasn't, you know, if if she's uh able to to talk before <laughs> going through a tunnel. Um, Steph, <clears throat> I know you're, you know, between cities right now, so. Yeah. If uh, if the internet guys would give us the grace of allowing you to pr to respond before you go through a bad signal area, uh, go ahead. Let us know what you thought about the movie and how is your movie going experience, if you will. <laughs> I did not hear the end of what you said. I heard what, what I think about the movie and how am I what? Uh, probably for the better. I said, how is your movie going experience? But you know, we don't get we ain't got to get in all that. You know. You know oh. You know. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. Honestly, the thing that threw me off the most was that Jonathan Majors brought such gravitas in his performance that I found myself forgetting that it was a goofy, ridiculous Marvel movie. There was one particular point when he did one of his Kang monologues and it was so like grounded and serious and deep. And then there was a super ridiculous moment after that. And I was like, why are they ruining this serious drama with this absurdity? And I had to remind myself, no, Stephanie, the entire thing is absurdity. <laughs> Kang just brought a moment of seriousness to it. And then I was like, okay, right. cool. I, I have to keep myself grounded um, just in remembering that it's supposed to be good. It's, it's about a man who has ant superpowers. Like, why would you ever have expectations for it to be a serious drama? Um, but I, I thought it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, my one complaint is that it was not scary enough because I was sitting next to this really cute guy and I was like, ooh, maybe if there's like a scary part, I can grab his arm. Um, but it didn't happen. They didn't give me that opportunity. So that was disappointing. That's it. Well, there right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know who that man is, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I hope that you get another opportunity um uh to to to, to get uh some some warming up to I, I do know uh uh that um you know it, it, you know what i'm trying not to you know be you know, but it is what it is you're just um, scared we're gonna get mad at him or something yeah i am what man you, know, cause I, you know i don't know what's revealable i don't know you know what i'm saying I, i'm just trying to you know just get in where i fit in on this man but um uh, i guess for me i do have an opinion uh and i was one that said it was man and the reason I say that is because I felt I I hate to say this because you know I'm a huge Marvel fan, but I felt that within the quantum realm, you have to rely on a complete CGI background. And sometimes when Marvel does that, it just takes it doesn't give that realistic not don't get me wrong i know we're in the quantum realm so there's no real realistic you know depiction of it but it was kind of like i was like all right man the quantum realm all right man it it, it looks a little I mean, it was kind of she hulkish went with some of the C cgi and that kind of was annoying and i ain't gonna lie uh this this probably isn't gonna sit well with everybody but i love paul rudd i love his character scott lang but i felt like as opposed to some of the other movies, some of his lines weren't hitting as hard and weren't as funny as they have been in previous movies, which kind of just made me want uh, like Michael Pena, you know, and like he, him, him missing in, in, in the movie and, and, and kind of, you know, you already heard that I campaigned for T.I. to come back and, you know, <laughs> and I see that didn't come back. And then, but my, my biggest, my biggest um, complaint about it, and perhaps this was done out of no this is probably my fault because um omar kind of put me down set me down one path and made me start thinking you know what that does make sense all right we're, we're losing uh we're losing members uh by the minute <laughs> now he didn't like the shit you were talking about Ant man she's yeah i don't out. think yeah maybe maybe she's, <laughs> not, if she's like not not my aunt man um but i just feel like uh there was a lot of missed opportunities in this movie to make it a little more monumental and by the end of it it felt more like just a movie rather than what i was hoping it would be which is a movie that would kick start even more based on the sequence of events that took place in this movie um more emotional more of an emotional response 
Um, the fact that spoiler alert, three, two, one, the <laughs> fact that everybody made it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, was a little, was, was like, I was like, all right, you know, what's going on, you know? And then I started letting myself get into my head, like, all right, so if they're in the quantum realm, but he can make us a big, why is he only big enough in the quantum realm? Like wh- if he's Ant-Man, can he Ant-Man himself out of the quantum realm? You know what I'm saying? Like why is he, when he gets him, when he makes himself huge Ant-Man, he's still little huge Ant-Man. Um, and, I'm going to keep it real. I was hoping I was I was hoping for more from Modoc. I wasn't as impressed as y'all was with Modoc. I feel like they made Modoc kind of kind of kind of soft and and um you know his original character was a lot more gruesome, a lot more uh, a lot more uh, um uh, shall I say like uh, uh, aggressive and a little less of the uh you know the 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 candy you know don't be a dick type shit and i mean if you know modok in whatever realm you know when he's with aim when he has all these powers like i just don't see him as being this comic i mean yes he had the show on hulu and yeah he's you know he's comical in that realm but i just i felt like he was made to be the punching bag in this movie Whereas I was hoping he would be more of a lethal enforcer. I mean, come on, mechanical organism designed only for killing. And he's kind of like comic relief a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It just, it it didn't bode too well with me. Um, so I guess I didn't, I, I, I liked Kang. And like the question that um, Alan posed before he, when, when he first got on was, if Kang wasn't in this movie, if not even Kang, if Jonathan Majors wasn't in this movie, uh, would we still have the same feelings that we do about this movie that we do right now? I guess that's my question for y'all. I, I, I'm pose that to Steph. Um, Steph, if Jonathan Majors was not in this movie, would it have been as good as as you said it was? It depends. Are we replacing him with Michael B. Jordan or Winston Duke? Like, is there another beautiful black man in his place? So, um, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so it's just as long as it's beautiful black man in that role, it don't matter who it is. What if it was the dude from Bridgerton? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the light skin dude. You said you're from Bridgerton? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. All good. All right. I mean, what, unless we're, if we're talking like a Seth Rogen, like no, it's it's over. <laughs> it's over <laughs> for me. All right, all right. So insert beautiful black man here and step is please. Uh, so I mean, yeah. am I tripping? Am I tripping? Uh, I mean, I I don't know, man. Am I being too harsh? on a movie that's just meant to be fun. Uh, I kind of, it just, it it didn't, for Kang the Conqueror, you know, Kang the Conqueror to be outdone by Ant-Man, you know what I'm saying? With little to no repercussions. Uh, it just, it, it didn't bode well. Now I know that the, the ending sequence did kind of add context to it tyrone but why is it that it doesn't sit well with me that this guy that is really set to be one of the most what like the strongest one in the mcu right now i mean not just him i know there's a whole horde of them but that he was so easily thwarted if you if i would say somebody who was able to take Mm ant-man and cassie and with whatever the power of the force throw them up against the wall, hold them up, turn them upside down. He's fist fighting at the end. For what? Why are you fist well, fighting? Uh, his, his suit uh, seems to be the source, or in, in this, in the Conqueror's case, like seems to be the source of his powers, technology, his, uh, his technological acumen. So when, when his suit broke uh, during the ant attack, he was then left uh, without, you know, that extreme power, uh, mm. that ridiculous amount of power. So he was fist fighting. Very good at it. Uh, and it was that was a hell of a fight. Like Paul Rudd, uh, Ant Man uh, took a couple, took a couple stomps like real bad. I, uh, Steph and I were like, oh shit! Like it got real. Like damn. Uh, but that was why uh, the you know the kind of the power thing go. And then uh, 
I, I feel you on the ending because I think what happens, we went into this like, okay, this is the, the guy that's going to be like Kang the Conqueror is going to be the guy that we're scared of for the next 10 years or whatever, right? right. Uh, right. That's what we thought going into this. And even that was sort of like a little bit of a bait and switch because, you know, that it turns out that we're, that's not the guy and that we're right. that we're going in a in a crazier direction than we thought we were going. So um, throughout the movie, we, we learn how powerful he is. We buy how powerful he is because Jonathan Majors absolutely killed the role. Uh, we were scared for everybody involved. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the movie, we're like, oh, shit, like they they won. Like we didn't expect like I was sitting here, I was waiting for him to get out and for it to be like, okay, here's here's all the craziness. I'm about to start a rampage and just kill everybody. But uh, you know, they they win at the end. And uh it it seems like insurmount it seemed like insurmountable odds at the time. So it's like, how did this happen? So I get I get that. That's why I said the ending wasn't perfect, uh, but it does make sense because of how it happened and because of the, you know, the the different twists and turns and stuff. The uh the technologically advanced ant civilization. I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, also, I liked it as an allegory for like, uh, you know, the people uh, gathering together and overtaking a tyrant. I uh, love that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's so I, I get it. I, I do get when people are like, I'm kind of disappointed in that ending. But uh, like Kang isn't gone. We're just going to I think what, what's going to happen is we're just going to see these until we get to like the, uh, a Fantastic Four type uh, tie in or something until we get to that really big tie in. I think we're going to just see kind of interesting versions of Kang, Jonathan Majors killing whatever he does. And then uh, I was being like, well, what, you know, what's the, who's the guy? Mm-hmm. You know, when is it going to be the guy? So, you know, I, I feel the disappointment a little bit. I understand. Mm-hmm. Well, now that we got Ty back, let me see if we can get uh, some more uh, uh, opinion out of him. Ty, uh, you were telling us about what you liked about the movie. Uh, I don't know if you missed it or not, but I kind of expressed how I was a little disappointed with the depiction of Modoc. He was kind of made, he was caricatur- caricaturized, in my opinion. And uh, Modoc ain't no bullshit. I mean, you played Avengers. You know what I'm saying? You know this dude is a ruthless motherfucker when he wants to be. And for him to kind of be made out to be some clown just didn't really sit well with me. What do you think? I think there was a familiarity with the people, with the with the with Michael Douglas, with you know Scott. Um, there was already a familiarity there, and I I think, um, and also the daughter. Uh, and as the movie progresses, you see that. Um, Darren, <laughs> um, <laughs> Darren, uh, you know, attempted to 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 make something happen. It went terribly wrong, and for all accounts, he died. Um, mm-hmm. So his life his life ended. Um, Kang decided to to, to turn him into Modoc, <laughs> and then yeah. and then it seemed as the movie went on that he had no choice in the matter in regards to whether or not he was going to be evil, whether or not he was going to do this. Um, Kang pretty much dictated whatever it was until again, um, there was some dialogue between him and Cassie and she reminded him that you don't have to, you have a choice. You don't have to be this way. Um, I think if those individuals are perfect strangers, the version of Modoc you get in the movie is totally different. Um, but because they had already established um, that that there was already you know a long term relationship built and everything like that, that is I think why they went the route that they went. I thought um, as just like a comparison and just looking at the way that he he looked as Modoc, I thought they 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 were spot on. I thought that like they that it he looked so much like Modoc. Till I was like, all right, you know, what I mean, like this is, you know, what I mean, we maybe didn't get the version of Modoc you wanted, but with that being said, that doesn't mean that that version of Modoc cannot still come back to the MCU, and and be what be what it is that you wanted to be. Um, but as far as like what you were saying about Kang, because I did catch that a little bit of that, um, I do agree that I was throughout the movie, I was like. There were moments where I was like, oh, he's powerful. You know, mm-hmm. flick at a finger, flick at a finger. Like he's flicking fingers and, and, <laughs> and doing this. And and like he did something with his finger where he was just like this. And as he's moving his right. finger, 
your your body is literally like <laughs> like crazy yeah. about you. So that that gives you an idea, and 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 I think that was that was that was something that the directors wanted to show that I that he has this much power in his fingertips. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine if he just extends his whole hand, or he does something more. You know what I mean? And 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 again, you had everybody in the quantum realm shook, like you. Right. you they, they didn't even say his name for the first right. time. It was like uh, him, him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, whoa! Who? They were they kept asking, "Well, who is he? Who is? He? You don't know, you right? Know, like like right. That, that to me, like you know, it, it it gives you an idea of of the potential, and I think that's what. Marvel was trying to do was show the potential of what Kang can be. And then, you know, uh, at the end of the movie, you know, that I think I, I, could, I could probably save that part. Uh, but, you know, what I mean, like there there's enough there to make you fearful of what's to come. And and even Kang himself said, you guys have no idea what's coming. Like right. it, this is another one of those uh same scenarios that thanos came up with where it's like look you trust me you don't want to see what would happen if if i let this stuff happen so let me you know what i mean so I, I i thought it was a i thought it was a decent version of of kang i didn't expect full-on uh kang like you did because i know that there's a, at least two more movies that we're gonna see him in so oh, at least yeah that's yeah so at least two more movies so um yeah i'm not so mad about that but i think they did give us the potential of what a king a king variant can be and can do and all of those kind of things uh nolly um this modok this king was really beefed up in my opinion in the trailers especially the king i mean they showed us they show they did what I hate about trailers, which is why I'm going to make an announcement. I'm not watching trailers no more. <laughs> it spoiled the movie for me. Exactly what normally happens with trailers is what happened in this. They gave away some of the key moments of the climax in the trailer, which I hate about trailers. That's why I don't watch them for Marvel and Star Wars and shit that I know I'm going to watch. Having said that, I feel like the trailer was meant to depict a strong version of Kang. I feel like the first half of the movie, they they spent beefing up how powerful Kang was, how he wiped away, and this, not just Kang, but this version of Kang in this timeline had wiped away civilizations, had fought against revolutions, had turned this area in the quantum realm into his own dominion. And then him and his girlfriend and his daughter just beat him up right quick and kill him off right quick i mean mm. uh am i tripping or good movie doesn't necessarily mean that the plot was great i mean what am i what, what do you think do you think that that, that i'm that i'm off, off my rocker uh, i do want to just You're add, not, oh, yeah. oh sorry no go ahead oh no it wasn't necessarily like that he was it, like so the, the timeline thing, don't forget the quantum realm is out of space and time. So it right, wasn't yeah, necessarily right. that he was killing that timeline or anything. So he was just, you know, this is uh, the Council of Kings banished him to this to true. this spot to true, keep him true, true, from, true. you know, any further damage. Or I don't know, we, we still don't know exactly why they banished him. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we didn't necessarily get a straight answer on that. So it'll be interesting to see why that's the case. Oh, we got a straight answer, Tyrone. On why they banished him? Mm -hmm. Because oh, he okay, wanted because because the, he he basically told you he said the reason that they 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 put him there is because he he realizes what's going to happen in the end and his his choice in the matter was to kill all of the other kings mm -hmm. in order to in order to stop what what their plans was and and so that's what that's kind of in essence why they banished him there and that's why when when he died um you know they were they were like uh, we felt it. We know for sure he's died. He died, and that, and then you know, the council of gangs was reconvened. <laughs> to say yeah. the we gonna talk about the gangs too, but real quick, Nolly, what was you about to say? Um, you left out the ants. The ants helped. Okay, they helped. Oh, I, so the did, I didn't get about the ants. I yeah. the ants. They they did, the trailer did hype him up, and but they it really showed the best parts of the movie. Like it did. Yeah. 
Kang yeah. was Kang in. My boyfriend was like, Can you keep it in your pants? I was like, Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely okay, not. Yeah. He was doing the Kang Wang. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, Jonathan Majors, I, I do believe, brings an extra added uh, like amount of gravitas to mm. every role that he plays and frankly boosted this movie up to another level based on his performance. I mean, there were times where he was like, like he does this thing with his face, you know what I'm saying? Where like you feel what he's saying and like it, it unlike, it, it's almost very Denzel-esque, but I damn near say Denzel, I guess we now know he is Denzel, not Denzel, I guess. But um, I refuse. <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> um, I do, I do think that Kang, that, that this version of Kang was the movie like it, it it made the movie dope um i i, I do have a couple other uh things that i thought that were interesting what was y'all's uh, opinion of the resistance you know that was kind of led by my man who played cheating you know who uh, he is right you know who that dude right there is right the dude like the actor know? or the character the the, the 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 actor but you know what you know uh what other show he he's he's, on, he's in a good place He's um, in, yeah, he's in that, but he's also on um Flash on the on the flat. He, he was on the Flash show with uh, uh um yeah. uh, on with CW. Grant, Grant Gustin. Mm -hmm. Was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what role did he play? Uh, he was like a, a a guest that came on one time, and they they like uh did his mind or something. He had like um forgot something or whatever, and they redid his mind or something. So he was on like for like a, a episode or two. I'm All right, well, I dropped off Flash. Like, 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 he's not like a recurring, uh, a recurring character or whatever. I stopped yeah. Flash after like season twelve. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know, I know, it's, I know it's on season nine right now, and it's on this final season. But um, but yeah, and we're gonna talk about Flash a little later. But um, yeah, I know him from a good place. He's cheaty from a good place. You know what I'm saying? The dude who's who who, who goes to hell because he can't make up his mind about shit. <laughs> He's like too indecisive. If you haven't watched The Good Place with Kristen Bell and and, uh, and, and this gentleman and um, a couple other folks, uh, I, I definitely say it's worth a watch. At least yeah. the first few seasons was pretty it's cool. A good show. But um, but but yeah, I, what, 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 what do we think about the resistance? What about the, the fact that there are humans that don't know that they're humans, that there's uh, beings that don't know there's an earth? Uh, you know, like what, what, what do we what do we think are about- Are they human? Uh, right, well, I mean, you tell me what I mean. What 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 is going on here? That was another thing that kind of fucked me up a little bit. It's like, are these guys like? There were some of the monsters, so to speak, that looked like like what we learned in in school, like cellular, uh, yeah. <laughs> like protozoans, flagella, amoeba type things. But then they had these humanoids. Whether they're humans or not, we don't know. And I I don't know uh, uh, Tyrone. I mean. I felt like that was a little weird. What 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 do you think about the, the resistance? Um, and, and I, I thought the resist. Yeah, I thought it was it was great. I, I I liked the the different creatures. I liked that there were humans. I liked that there were different creatures. Um, Steph made a point uh, after the movie. She was like, it felt there were times where it felt kind of like Star Wars almost because all these different mm. beings and races and stuff they all would have fit right in with Star Wars. Uh, and I, I think that the existence of uh, humanoid type. Uh, people in any kind of sci-fi realm, whether it's the quantum realm or like uh, a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago, those kinds of things. It's just, we need to see ourselves. Uh, you know, when okay. we don't see humans, we're like, I'm checking out of this shit. Uh, you know what I mean? So I think it's just one of those things. So I, I'm always down for some and for some uh, some weird human action. But I also think that this might be like a little bit of a nod to mutants because, you know, mm. yeah, his power, uh, there are a lot of like really weird mutant folks like i mean this this uh that's veb i think is his name with hilarious yeah, yeah, and uh yeah, but like yeah. kind of resembles uh glob uh from uh i believe the new mutants um and then also they had uh the one with that was like shooting the beams out of his head that was yeah. uh they named that one solemn which is actually like solemn is uh, is you know you'll see that character pop up in x-men books and stuff so i think that it's going to be less that these are human people who live in the quantum realm and it's just like uh it, it might be like maybe maybe mutants maybe there's some sort of other connection that they're going to make through the the quantum realm but uh overall i i liked all the different creatures and looks and and folks and uh drink the ooze i thought that was hilarious uh just <laughs> yeah really really dug it okay all right all right then maybe what's up ty i was just gonna say um i mean we found out 
basically that the quantum realm is made up of a multitude of different universes and worlds. Um, you know, they that was one of the things that um, they said as soon as they got down there and kind of got the information from, um, what's her name? Uh, J J um, Janet. Janet, I, I think. I forgot how to pronounce her name, but that's close. Yeah. Janet Van Dyne or whatever her name is. Uh, oh, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she basically, uh, I think it was her or maybe it was the, um, when they had gotten to see the rebels and the rebels basically told them that, you know, the, there's, there's so many different worlds that exist down here in the, in the quantum realm. So like these, mm. these, these, these people could be from another, another multiverse. They could be, you know, the quantum realm just has so many different worlds that are blended. Look, the ants were able to construct their own city away yeah. from everybody and no one knew about it except for uh Hank because the, oh, the ants yeah. told them about it like they mm -hmm. like it you saw them construct this 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 city in the matter of you know like he said they they did it in like a, you know a matter of 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 hours but it's like uh, I, I guess years or something something that had happened yeah, uh, said, like, like, basically they live like a thousand years they they lived an entire thousand civilization years. yeah yeah, so they had they had made, uh, designed an entire civilization, and it was it th this place is so vast that no one would even know about it, like unless they come in and do what they did, which was save the day. Thank God for those ants. Yeah, but uh, another thing, uh, uh, another another inconsistency. Time doesn't move the same way in the quantum realm, yet they left and came right back to the same timeline. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. It, I mean, if you watch, if you watch it over and over again, you. Be, all right, what's up, Tyrone? I don't think that's an inconsistency. I think that proves the the yes. point that they make is that you know time moves in such a crazy way in the quantum realm. Therefore, these ants uh, lived a thousand years, and this is what we can. <laughs> My bad. I was I was muted and then this started playing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Is, no, you're good. No, I was I was muted, but I it, I think it proves the point. I think um uh the the consistency is there with the with the, the understanding of time in the quantum realm. Uh, the ants it happened really quick. Uh, when when they got back into that moment, uh, like for example, uh, Scott Lang when he was in the quantum realm before he came back in Endgame, he thought he was gone for maybe ten minutes. Turns out he was gone for five years. You right. know what I mean? Uh, so, and that was just, the, you know, in that moment, how he got out those kinds of things. So it's the quantum realm is sort of like a cheat code for, uh, for plot, because you can literally do anything in the quantum realm and explain it and say the quantum realm, realm is weird and doesn't follow the rules of anywhere else. It's definitely like a, like a very, it's a cheat code plot device and uh, they're, they're going to use it to full effect. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess that does make sense to an extent, but it's also like every time anybody else went into the quantum realm, the time, like when Michelle Pfeiffer's character was there for like 30 years, she didn't come back 30 years later. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like she, you know, she was back sooner. The time went different. Um, mm -hmm. when Scott was there being five years gone, all of a sudden they go to the quantum realm and come right back in time for Cassie's birthday. Not too long. After. I mean, I just thought that that, I mean, I understand you saying it's a, it's a, it's a consistency, but yeah, cheat code with, 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 I guess it just works however you feel like working it. Um, but what do we think about the fact that, uh, that, uh, baby girl had a little extramarital, you know, a baby girl got needs, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, oh, listen, uh, you know, when, when you, when you're in the field, you know, everything goes, what's up, Ty? I definitely got something to say about that. So when I, when I heard, when I found out that she slept with Bill Murray, I was like, so Jonathan Majors wasn't uh, he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> with him. I mean, like y'all was cozy and, and building shit together, and your womanly needs didn't come into into play until you got around Bill Murray. Um, now that's a plot. It, makes me, it makes me wonder. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, Phil oh. Piper saying that she doesn't go, she doesn't do black men. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was a there was a young vibrant <laughs> male, male who, who, listen, who fell out the sky <laughs> into your lap and you still didn't sleep with him. And then here comes Bill Murray, old raggedy, soggy, like, <laughs> coming to the table, eating, eating little fucking aliens, talking about 
if you want to change, you got it. You know, like, come on, man. Like, you 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 found that more appealing than Jonathan Majors? Hmm. Mm, if yo. To swirl, that would have been Ooh. the time. Yo, he, he has a point. I wonder, can you get pregnant in the quantum realm? Uh, oh, is there, are there like hospitals? Can you imagine? Or- Probably get pregnant with an ant. Recently, being pregnant for like two years or something. I would have it. But we also we, for like. Go ahead. And I was gonna say we don't know if, if Michelle Pfeiffer tried, and Jonathan Majors was just like, mm, "Nah, I'm good." Like you know, and because yeah, she might have been like, "Okay," you know what I mean? And he's just oh, like, okay. you know, I don't know. I love black women. And only black women. <laughs> I'm not trying to get on all this quantum whiteness. Yeah, you like you know, it's it could be it could be that she tried and got rejected. I'm just saying. I mean, it could be that she smashed. There's no evidence I mean, yeah. to support that she didn't. Oh, I mean, so they was all everything. hugged up next to each other. Everything. So she yes. just was out there just living her best life because there was no hang. And yeah, she, she might have he wouldn't know. Yeah, she might have got it on with them. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Maybe ain't got no holes on black. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, it seemed like she might have knew she might have been familiar with him too. Like, get out of here. <laughs> like, I already know how you move. <laughs> yeah, 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 we in the quantum realm, but I'm gonna eat my vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> what if Modoc was like, oh hey Janet, what up? How you doing? <laughs> Everybody. I don't know. If she fucked the broccoli before she fucked the black man, I'm gonna be real mad. At her, boy. It's gonna be crazy. You know, this must sound so weird out of context. Like, and this is the quantum realm for you. Yes, it's so confused right now. Yeah, yes, I can't wait for you to to, to find out yep. what's going on, man. I can't wait to hear your opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, just a few more things on on this. So, I mean, that whole notion of her being lonely and having needs, and then Mike Michael uh, um, Douglas's character, Hank Pym. Basically being like, well, I went on a date once. It didn't mm-hmm. work out. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just got kind of weird. And she's like, ew. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Hope was sitting there like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell's going on? I thought that was an interesting interjection. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and why the fuck Michelle didn't tell about nut Michelle? Um, God damn it. Uh, Janet. What's her, what, what's Janet. her character's name Janet. in the, in the Janet. movie? Janet Van Dyne. Janet. Janet. Yeah. Janet. 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 Janet, of course. Janet, Damn it, Janet. 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 I was Janet. literally. All right, all right, yes. I was all right, you know what I'm saying? My hearing aid ain't all the way up. Um, but uh <laughs> yeah, man, I didn't I didn't think that I, I don't know. She was acting real, she was acting real weird the whole time, man. And like the whole reveal of how she's the one that that uh that took away stuff from Kang uh was 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 interesting. But I guess I don't know. I I I thought that it, 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 she she did her thing in this picture. I got kind of flashbacks of Catwoman from Batman Returns when she um, started kicking into action sequences. Even though I know that was stunt, you know we know we all know that was stunt. You know what I'm saying? But um, I thought she definitely held it down. Her character was completely ridiculous. Um, but I'm still a little confused as to like how she was able to once they had uh, once once um, Scott had basically made them both lose how did cassie so quickly like just relocate them because if you recall um it took modok having the signal being shot into uh you know earth eight earth 616 for him to kind of bring them down to the quantum realm but then cassie i guess she just had a gps locator on them and just like here let me just beam them right on back out it just, I don't know, man. It just, it seemed a little too easy. You know what I'm saying? The, the complexity was thrown out the window in this Tyrone. And I think that that's one of the things that kind of made me be like, eh, you know, this just, maybe this could have been done a little better. But does that make sense? Am I, uh, how is she able to do that so quickly? I think it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you, you know, you can spot some weaknesses in the ending, but it makes sense with the movie. Like they make sure it makes sense because, you know, they went back. Uh, she still had her machine. The machine was fine. The only thing that uh, everything got sucked into it. And the only thing that uh, went wrong with it was that it got unplugged. You know what I mean? That was it. Uh, you know, okay. so she just basically went back in, plugged it in, and was like, "Get that!" And then, boom. You know what I mean? So, is is it is it great? Is it a great explanation and a great ending uh, to that whole sequence? Not necessarily, uh, but mm-hmm. they explained it enough to be like, "All right, this is you know, we're having our fun Ant Man movie, and uh, and now everybody's okay." You know what I mean? So it's, I feel you. I, I can. I don't think your disappointment with these things is necessarily like uh, a, a like invalid, you know what I mean? But it's just uh, I think they 
I think this was them just being like, all right, we gotta, we gotta put a lid on it a little bit. Cause it definitely yeah. harder. Like if, if, if Paul Rudd dies at the end of Ant-Man dies, like we're having a different car. This, this, that would hit hard as shit. But then also, you know, there, we don't know if, uh, if Paul Rudd, how, how long Paul Rudd's contract is, is valid and how many more movies we're going to see him in and stuff. So, you know, it is ultimately a business. Uh, so those things are going to happen. Ty, what's up, man? Um, where was Ti? And why, why, why can't we get Ti back? Uh, and the rest yeah. of the um, because we did get one of the crew, uh, and and uh, I was like, well, where's the rest of the crew? Why did we only get the picture with the one dude, um, from mm-hmm. Chips? I don't, I, I, uh, Michael Pena. Why did we only get Michael Pena? Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, and and you're right, there was a missed opportunity, and the missed opportunity is a great missed opportunity because. You could have very well had another uh, Wong, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was set up so so for Wong to just come in like, ah, <laughs> oh, so you got stuck in the quantum world, uh, <laughs> you know, and then you got Madison in the background. I was like, just gonna say, it would have been funny to see Madison in the in the goat. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Her, like when she was like, there was that weird goat, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, I gave my blood. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Uh, yeah, we missed the opportunity to bring that to bring Wong in and 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 have him come and save the day once again. Uh, it just it just kind of keep that whole momentum going because right now we got we got Wong popping in and out of everybody's movies, and I'm I, and I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? Like like more Wong. Yeah, I I don't know about. I mean, I think there's a ten, there's a a risk of overdoing Wong appearances. So I'm not mad at him not appearing in this one, um, but I definitely get your point. Uh, but as for the Ti thing, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what I've learned is since his appearance in the first couple Ant Man movies, there was some allegations of you know some misconduct that he was kind of dealing with legality wise and i think marvel was trying to steer clear of that perhaps and maybe that impacted his ability to come back but i definitely think anytime you bring ti into his fold man you wake up the whole hip-hop industry you know what i'm saying so i think that they could still think about bringing them back but it is what it is uh just to kind of before we start moving on here let's discuss some of these end sequences uh, that we saw at the end of the trailer now if you are a marvel fan once again and did not stay to the very end of the movie then you are not a real marvel fan because every marvel fan knows that you got to get at least one or two in sequence at the end of each movie and this time they did not disappoint in my opinion the end sequences were actually almost more exciting than elements of the movie and in the end sequence the first one we saw uh we did learn, we learn. A little bit more about what we can expect and what kevin feige meant when he said yo Jonathan Major's reach is so wide and so vast that we can use him in so many different characters. And now we know that he actually is a whole bunch of different characters. And we're going to get a whole bunch of different versions of Kang. I mean, Tyrone, are we ready uh, 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 for a whole stadium worth of Kangs? And I mean, is this enough? Uh, I mean, because they're basically one of the things that was the most chilling was that it was like, oh, they killed uh you know the you know the exiled one you know what i'm saying who is it and they're like oh we got to take care of this and now they're looking at all the timelines like they took they took a step back they took they phased out and looked at all of the timelines so what do you think that's going to lead to going forward man what do you think uh they're trying to kind of tease uh tyrone with these depictions of kang uh in the movie uh i that, it's a tough one because what I thought was going to happen uh, before Ant Man was definitely not what happened now. You know, after Ant Man, so uh, it's it's kind of tough. I do think that ultimately uh, it will still be like a King the Conqueror type that will be the the main like threat to the Avengers. Um, I what what we're doing with the Council of Kings, I'm not exactly sure yet. It, it's 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 so there's so many uh, possibilities and so many options, and I. To be honest, I'm still, my mind is still kind of trying to wrap around the idea of like, okay, what is this, what are all these Kangs convening mean for reality and all the realities and stuff like that. So it's just, uh, I'm, I'm having a great time just, uh, this is one of those moments I'm having a really good time being absolutely clueless. Mm. I'm gonna just throw it out there. I'm, I have no, I haven't even had a time to, uh, you know, to predict anything because I'm just like, 
what the hell? This is wild. So sorry to not answer your question at all, but uh, I'm excited <laughs> that I can't answer your question at all. <laughs> now, that's an answer. That's an answer. Uh, Ty, Ty, what you say, bro? I, I have a prediction. Um, Please. Because Please. one of the things that uh, I think is um, – it wasn't Ramatut. Who was the who was the one with the purple, purple? Uh, uh, Genghis Kang, I think. Genghis Kang. So Genghis Kang said made a comment, and he said, he said they're gonna try to take it from us. Mm. He like, said something like that. They're gonna try to take it. We have to stop yeah, it. They'll take everything. Yeah. They'll take everything. I think <laughs> who he's referring to is the TVA. I think that oh, like right. that that the the battle is always against the TVA when it comes to mm. the Kang. Because the Kangs are variants. They are, they are, they are just they their whole purpose is to distort the timeline. And the TVA's job is to keep the, stabilize the timeline and make sure that that time runs runs smoothly and how it's supposed to run. So the fact that they said that, and then you know, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll get into it, what happens next. It leads me to believe that the the reference was to the TVA, and and stopping the TVA. Mm, yeah, and and to your and to your point, um, the, we were also given another end credit screen uh, scene, where it basically leads to. Uh, yes, I don't even know if there's any reason of you watching it anymore. <laughs> I, went out, I, I told you you didn't have to stay. Yes, I didn't want to spoil, you know, because you know this might not be the week. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate you hanging out. Um, so now we know that this is going to be visited again in the upcoming season two of Loki, where we kind of get what looks like I, I don't know. I, uh, I, who is this? Alfred, Alfred Einstein uh, came. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, what is his but, name? Nicholas, Nicholas something or Nicholas, Nicholas Kangla? <laughs> know, it's that, is, that is name. I just, his I name. just, it, which, yeah, it was it's Nicholas something though. Mm, I don't know. Nali, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming that you saw the end credit screen, end credit scene. Does this just make us more excited about the Loki season two or? Are we running a risk of wearing out the welcome or oversaturating phase five with Kang already? You don't think so? I don't think so. Um, because we know now we have the multiverse and so we're already dabbling in there. So the possibilities are endless. So going into it, we already know we're going to have multiple versions, which I'm not going to lie to but you know, also, oh, please tell me I wasn't the only one watching the first end credit scene and being like, "We was gangs." When <laughs> okay, it wasn't just me. Was it just me? Because I said it as soon as I saw him. I said, "We was gangs." <laughs> My boyfriend right, so I don't think the joke hit, but you know, it was great. For me. <laughs> we was <laughs> gangs. <laughs> That's real. I didn't. It didn't come right to mind, but I should have thought that when I saw old boy baby Sphinx in the back with the two right. common joint on, you know, what I'm saying yes. like yo. But oh, you know, what I'm saying the dude, the, the Tron Kang is the one that's fucking with me, the one in the background here with, with mm -hmm. the with the LED lights and shit. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what that is, man. But um, it, it it definitely was. I don't think that it deserved to be shit on like the critics are shitting on it. Like it's not a bad movie. I didn't hate it. I didn't. I didn't not like it. I did like it. Uh, I just thought that there were some missed opportunities. I do think that it would have hit harder if there was some tragedy. Um, and I thought that, that that I honestly thought that this might have been the opportunity. And, and you know, I'm, uh, sorry, Mike, but to wipe out the Pims, uh, you know, what I'm saying, like to <laughs> give us some heart. You know what I'm saying? Like so the in the quantum realm. Yeah, I, I thought they should have stayed in the quantum realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would have it yeah. would have been great for them to just be down there with his aunts. He's got yeah, his aunts. Yeah. They're over there, and then maybe later on, later on, in, yeah, in, the, yeah. in that's that in one of those second or third movies. We we like they again they come to save the day and this time right. and some built some some you know what I mean because these yeah. ants are level right now so they yo know, right. yeah so they, I think that, that would have been the plan but you know yeah I honestly when 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 uh at the moment where uh Scott had trapped himself and 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 hope were trapped I was like okay this is the tragic moment this yeah. is what we can revisit in upcoming Marvel movies. 
that makes them how to kind of bring these movies together. One thing that Kevin Feige always does is he makes sure these movies kind of intertwine. But at the end of it, it just ended up being the fact that, you know, hey, this had awakened the, the, uh, the council and now we're going to see them go to work. And I'm just a little nervous about whether or not, you know, uh, maybe, you know, too much Kang is going to be too much Kang. We didn't see that much of Thanos. Thanos showed up at the end, at the end credit scene sometimes, but he wasn't the main character in a lot of the movies. You know, he was the main character in the Avengers movies. That was it. But not like, you know, now they're setting Kang up in Ant-Man and Loki and, you know, and, and I mean, and he's probably going to be an integral part of Phase 5. So I'm just hoping that they do this right. We trust in the almighty Kevin Feige uh, in his decision making with this. But um, I won't lie. Um, I guess I think as much as I liked it, I just was hoping for a little bit more, I suppose. And Vinny, they yes. built they I feel like Kevin Feige is doing a wonderful job of building up the character of Kang because in the Loki series, we know he was he who remains. He who remains basically at that point at point to you know let you know like you, you got to see that it, they, they really couldn't do anything with him unless he let them. You know what I'm saying? And and so you already realized that that you know he was the keeper of time at that point, and then they killed him. And he even he like the warning is continuing to be consistent. The, okay. the warning from he who remains was like, if you kill me, yeah, the, the person who comes after me sure. is way worse than anything you're ever gonna. Then we come into this one. It's the same thing. Kang is saying the same thing. Yo you guys think that i'm the bad guy but you guys have no idea what's going to come it's way worse and they keep that they're just they just keep building and building and building so i i don't i don't know man yeah i, I have a there was one line that he spoke in the movie that really stuck out to me and i think is going or could potentially define uh the reasoning for him being who he is uh when she said what are you going to do like when you get out then what he said i'm going to win and I, what I think it is, I think there is like, I think the Kangs, there's competition among all the Kangs all the time. Uh, they they each know that they are the most brilliant, most powerful person in their reality. And they want to be the most brilliant, most powerful person, period. So I, I think uh, what we're going to see is uh, is pretty much these, these Kangs competing with each other uh, endlessly until one finally becomes like the biggest problem. Because his motivation, his motiv his motivation was to just to fuck shit up. He wanted to, he just wanted to win, and by winning, he meant destroying all the realities that were outside of his own. Yeah, I totally, I totally disagree with Tyrone. I think the whole reason that they convene the Council of Kangs is so that they can finally work together. I think that's you don't bring all of those people there. You know what I'm saying? Because again, I, I do agree with you as far as them having that conquering in that competitive uh nature but i think i think um uh the 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 the, the, the three individuals the three the three top individuals that we saw which was rama 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 Tut, um uh, uh Genghis, Genghis. and then whoever and then tron whoever <laughs> but but i think uh Genghis has Genghis khan of, you know obviously was the greatest conqueror you know in in in, the, in a lot of history um but i think what he's realizing is that the only way that we'll be able to defeat the tva and all of these superheroes that were just able to kill one of the kings is if we unite and i think that was the reason that he brought all of that all of those gangs to the same spot not to kill them but to 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 ask that they unify and do you know have the same goal and, and i think that's what's more dangerous than anything one king you can deal with how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with all the kings at once yeah i yeah. I, I i like this i just want to say I, I love i love this part of like the marvel phase thing because like we, we i know we all want like the end game feeling right now but consider like what it took for us to get to that end game feeling and we're right now we're building that like you know that anticipation and and we're, we're like building up our expectations and our hopes and we're, we're theorizing and stuff this is my favorite part of of the mcu uh is just like all of the possibilities what are we seeing what are the expectations what are the hopes uh so i i do want to remind everybody that we are at the beginning of 
like a, a huge yeah. story. So who the hell knows what's gonna happen? But this is this is why we this is why uh, MCU fans are always so like geeked up because we're we're we get to do this like nerd comic book shit and be like, what do we think? What do we think? Yeah, so think enjoy it. Enjoy it. Well, well, let me ask you this, Ty Tyrone. Would it? Have, would do you think the movie would have been better served if Scott Lang died, like Omar thought? I think the movie itself uh, would have probably been received better and would have ultimately like hit harder if uh, Scott Lang died in it. But I don't know if that would serve the greater uh, storyline and the greater purpose. I think there, I, I think there are decisions outside of just business decisions why mm. Scott Lang is still alive and why nobody got left in the quantum realm and stuff. So. Uh, I'm interested to see why. I'm interested to see if it, you know, if that this will eventually pay off. But I do agree with you that as a standalone movie, it would have hit harder if we lost Ant Man. Yeah, lost anybody. Yeah. Lost anybody. Like yeah. we didn't lose yeah. anybody. I think that's that's anybody. that's my thing. Like there's so many of them in the click, and for all of them to wipe away, uh, no pun intended, scot free, is just like, come on, man. You know, there's there's yeah. this opportunity, and it's not like we're not in the multiverse. They could Gamora the shit out of this if they wanted to. And be well, like, okay, we lost hope, but hey, we got a hope eight one eight. Well, I do, I do think they want to stay away from that. I think they, I think uh, what they want to do is make it so when people die or if people die, it matters and it hurts. You know what I mean? Like they, we, we don't want to be in a situation where we're just like, oh, like, this person died. Oh, here they are again. You know what I mean? Which is yeah. very it, that for people who read comics, that's a very familiar thing. Uh, you know, your your hero dies, and then all of a sudden they're back. You know, next issue or whatever. So, but I think in for as far as the MCU and the movies, they want that to really yeah. like, mean something and stay. Uh, so I, I can respect that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let's see. You know what, Vinny? Well, and and I, I won't say anything else. But I, I think also like the with with the Ant Man series, it's always been light and comic, book, right? And they they probably want to keep it light and comic. Book. Uh, and 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 what that does is it gives me a little a little bit of a level of excitement. Because I know what the next movie on the list is 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 coming, which is Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Volume Three, which I believe is going to be hella sad. You're going to yeah. get all the loss you need and everything. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> they're going to be like they're going to be like you know they didn't want. I don't think they wanted to continue just this like sad 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 sad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I but I, I I do agree that they, they should have probably killed somebody, whether it was Hank. Whether it was you know Janet, whether I not kill Cassie, but even if it was um uh what's her name Ellie or uh whatever uh his, whatever his girlfriend's uh, hope name is. Nope. hope yeah yeah so yeah they 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 could have killed even even hope but uh to kill Modoc and that be the person who we're supposed to somehow feel sad because you were my brother oh. That was, yeah. that was hilarious. That was to me. That was just a, great, a great joke. It was not sad at all. It was hilarious. Oh, it was absolutely. That's yeah. why I said it kept it. It was like even in that moment, it's like I'm in a bit. Like, uh, it's so dumb. It was so dumb. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it's it. like he's laughing at him while he's dying. Like, I mean, give me a fucking break. Like, it was crazy, man. It was, God, oh, yeah. God. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'll let that alone. Well, listen, there's plenty more, plenty more talk. We'll do more speculation as the week to come. We've already spent the greater, the greater length of the show discussing this. And we hadn't even talked about Last of Us uh, 4 and 5 with Tyrone and, and, and Nala yet. So we wanted to get into that. But before we get into that, I had a couple quick topics that I thought we could touch on real quick. And one of them being the fact that we do have the possibility now. Uh, oh, before, actually, let me do this one first. Uh, this can be a real quick topic. Qui-Gon evidently thinks that there's too many Star Wars spins off, spinoffs. And he's thinking that it's hurting the franchise. Do we agree, Tyrone? Uh, I don't necessarily disagree. But if you're Liam Neeson, you're playing Qui-Gon, uh, quit. <laughs> you know, like just say no uh, and, and bounce like uh that's that's the answer to that uh, st uh stop talking shit we're having a good time uh but uh, but ultimately like i don't think it's the number of spinoffs that's hurting star wars i think it's the quality of the spin -offs quality. That's hurting Star Wars. okay that's fair that's fair what about you nala you think that uh that that uh i mean you brought this to our attention uh is is qui-gon uh is qui-gon liam neeson <laughs> is he off his rocker or is he is he just and he caught he Look, I just want to know what Qui Gon is on because you were just in a spinoff, my guy. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally. Like, like, literally. What do you mean? He's dead though, so he's salt about it. Only way he can come back is a force. <laughs> so he's like, "Fuck the franchise. We need to stop this shit." I died. Like that's it. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that's a good point, Yaz. Well, I mean, he did say um, that he, I mean, one of the quote, if I could quote, if I'm not mistaken, he says that he didn't like the fact that there's so many spinoffs. And one of the things that he also shared is that he's more of a movie guy. You know, you got to remember, like, he was in the sequels, the prequels, and that came out in the 90s. So, I mean, he might be like, yo, man, enough of this. You know what I'm saying? He likes like, that movie know. paycheck. That's all that is. Too, oh, yeah. yeah I mean, I just think it's so... Anyway. I mean, but, but listen, it's so... I mean, how do you how do you sit and shit on some shit you literally just appeared in? You know what I'm saying? Like, you literally was just in one of these, one of these shows that you're talking about, and you're going to come out and put in public that you think there's too much spinoffs and you literally was in a spinoff. That's the height of hypocrisy, bro. Uh, yeah. Ty, I just think he's tripping, Ty. What this is a know? sneak diss, uh, y'all. This, this is a sneak diss uh, at Boba Fett because Boba Fett, <laughs> and this is really what that is. It's like, there's too many spinoffs. If y'all want to play that bullshit Boba Fett, people would like that show. <laughs> and he might be right. Uh, he might be right. He might be right. Uh, so this this is really just Liam Neeson sneak this at Boba Fett for us uh, for shitting on 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 everything that they did, even though Obi Wan just wasn't that. Uh, uh oh, so Tyrone, Obi Wan wasn't that good. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It was not that good. It was it was all right at best. There were a couple cool moments, but yeah, it was. I I was kind of mad at Obi Wan. Yeah. Not the character, and not uh, Ill McGregor, who did great, but just the show was just kind of. Eh. I think it's more of like his airtime. He didn't get a lot of airtime. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's salty. Because in the movies, you know what I'm saying. You have plenty of times to you know for them to cut scenes, and you still have scenes. You know what I mean? But like in a show, if they cut scenes and you're not really in any scenes, then. You know what I mean? Like that's not, I think that's where he's salt at. He's, you know, Boba Fett had a whole series of just like ridiculousness and craziness. And he got like, what, a couple, couple minutes in that, in that series. And then that was it. Mm. Well, I don't know if Qui-Gon was in <clears throat> Boba Fett, but your point is taken. He really didn't serve other than him finally getting his force ghost, which I talk shit yeah. about him all the time. I actually still think that uh, Qui-Gon uh, was, was under, under, uh, you under, like he, he did not get enough shine. I, I I think he was one of the dopest Jedi's, even though he did uh, basically give us the Empire. <laughs> he, he, just, he basically <laughs> trained Darth Vader. And shit. I mean, he told um, Obi Wan to train Darth Vader, and, and he didn't. You know, he, you know, it, that's a whole other thing. But uh, and he was defiant. Remember, he, he you know, Yoda and was like, "Nah, don't train this kid." He was like, "Fuck y'all, I'm training the motherfucker." You know what I'm saying? He was like, his dying wish was for him to be trained you know it was like all right man calm your ass down um we just to add a little bit of we start remembering shit say it again <laughs> liam needs to better shut up before we start remembering <laughs> shit. I, I, that's what i said he's he all up. this bullshit. yeah because he took the kid he didn't us, want to raise his ass tape, liam. liam don't make us run the tape about <laughs> what you were saying dude alderaan yeah. got some words for you yeah, no, Liam Neeson did did have some. He did did have some words for he. Uh, ain't you the guy that went looking for black people <laughs> to, to, to to hurt when you found out of, and now you want to kill the spinoffs, homeboy? Well, we just got <laughs> Reva. We just you know what I'm saying? Like, calm down, man. Sit your ass down. Um, here's what he says: There's too many spinoffs. It's diluting to me. Take it away the mystery and magic in a weird way. And then he basically said he has no interest in returning to Star Wars. This was, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because he did. Oh, just nobody asked. Wars. He said, he said, you can't fire me. I quit is what he He's said. A force <laughs> ghost. Like what, what purpose does he have serving as a force ghost? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, uh, I mean, let's I mean, keep if he's not, Bro, if he's not giving us some serious like Jedi fucking knowledge, then what, what, what purpose does he have? Like some inspirational quotes or something? You know what I'm saying? Like this is. Yeah. I mean, yo, Obi Wan. Use the Force. Be one with the Force. How, how many fucking times can you? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm just saying. He'll come up with a new fucking line. Like, what the fuck? You know? Well, yeah. I mean, but but Obi Wan. I mean, even though everybody on the panel didn't seem to really be a big fan of the show, I mean, it was it, it it's shining the light on Obi Wan, and for Obi Wan, we know that Luke and uh, Ray were amongst the two that we knew that had access to their force ghosts. And so for Obi-Wan to now be able to reunite with his master uh, in the Jedi world, I think that there is room for him to be a, a monumental figure. I mean, Obi-Wan, the original Obi-Wan, not Ewan McGregor, but the original was in both movies. You know, he told Luke to shoot, 
He told, you know, he was there walking with them in the Dagobah system. You know, he was the one that finally revealed about his father uh, being Obi Wan, uh, being being Darth Vader. I mean, he was integral. He was a very instrumental part of the series, despite the fact he was a Force ghost. So I think that even with him not being able to necessarily wield the Force in the physical realm, that is still room for him to be an important figure, especially since you know uh, there probably is going to be a, a Obi Wan part Martin two. So. Yeah, but but Ben's but like just like. On Boba Fett, Obi Wan, yo, Obi Wan got body on his mm -hmm. show, just like like Boba Fett. The, the, mm -hmm. the best character on Obi Wan was old girl. Uh, mm -hmm. Like so, like how you like you can't you can't have a great show that's named after you, and then it's so great, <laughs> and you're not the best part of the show. It just doesn't work sure. like that. So, um, yeah. Or unless, so, like, if he comes back in Force Ghost, like, you know, to give her, you know, some advice or like to like talk to Anakin and like try and appeal to his side, you know, before like, you know, like when he when he took him from his mom and saved him, whatever, you know, and then abandoned him. If he had tried to appear to that, then that would be kind of cool. But I'm I'm just saying like there's no purpose for Obi-Wan in the series or in like the song anymore. He's he's kind of he's gone. Nah, yo, nah. Here's my prediction for Obi Wan in season two, which I'm assuming there will be, because Ewan McGregor loves it. He loves it. He yeah. loves playing yeah. Obi Wan. He is not one of these dudes who's like tired of it. He wants more Obi Wan. I do think there will be a Obi Wan season two, and I my theory is that in Obi Wan season two, uh, that uh, at Qui Gon will eat his words and that he will start ushering in Obi to his more powerful self because obi-wan the series was basically about him coming out of exile finally being more of an instrumental figure in the rebellion and kind of getting his groove back so to speak and i think that he's going to be the voice in his shoulder his yoda um um in in season two so we'll see you know i could be wrong season two i'd be surprised like there's I a really, season two uh, it, have you has that been uh, no, that hasn't been confirmed. I'm speaking into existence. I'm very surprised if there's a season two of Obi Wan now. Uh, I, I'll bet you. Uh, uh, what's her name uh, coming up? Uh, the uh, with um, Ahsoka Tanu. Ahsoka Tanu. Uh, that may, that's probably going to be really good. We got Mandalorian coming back. We got, we we obviously have um, Andor. But yeah, though that Boba Fett, Obi Wan, uh, those projects, man, that shit is done bro like you like you might get those characters in another show but to give them obi-wan a show it it did terrible like it did not do good it did like like he is if, unless he uh, ewan is gonna do the show for free uh like, <laughs> he, loves the, he loves the role so much well you love it so much do it for free sir and we'll do it uh but but outside well, of that i don't see that happening man and it's sad we'll because old girl was really brilliant in it and i hope that she she you know gets to be in some other other uh projects i think we'll see reva again i do think yeah, we'll see reva, 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 reva killed her role um hey, uh moving on she was a good uh, yeah and I, I love seeing a black girl with braids with a lightsaber holy shit like come on give me all the feels pull up pull yeah. up um uh we uh, discussed the possibility of Bucky being the de facto leader of the of the Thunderbolts. I don't even think there's anything to be said about that. Well, uh, I have something to say about it real quick. Just what happened to Zemo? I thought Zemo was the leader. Uh, that is interesting. I, yeah. I I was thinking the same thing. I I don't know if Zemo is going to be like a leader of you know. I, I'm wondering if 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 this kind of starts this way, and maybe there's some sort of internal battle. That leads to Bucky being more because you know, be in in the the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. I mean, isn't Bucky still heralded as being like uh, who kind of keeps Baron Zemo in his place? So I would assume that in the Thunderbolts we start to see the transition of Baron Zemo, as they already started alluding to in Falcon and Winter Soldier, to him coming more into the fold of the quote unquote anti-hero slash hero role and we'll probably start with bucky being that because he, he already is uh, uh in the hero role so I, I think that there's some teasing some some playing around with the with the with the narrative here mm -hmm. um uh and and it could be both you know we could start one way and end another way because ultimately none of them i mean it's really uh a ross right who's t technically the the leader uh um the the general of of, of um of the thunderbolt so i mean neither one of them i think 
Zemo's always scheming though. So like, uh, we won't know what he really is doing or really is saying for a little while. He's always, yeah, he's always on some shit. So <laughs> stay scheming. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited about this. Um, I'm a little nervous, uh, but I'm excited um, because I think that this could finally be our introduction to our live action, Miles Morales, possibly, if not at least a teased version, because like I said before, Tom Holland has been saying, look, it's time to pass the baton. He don't want to play Spider-Man when he's 30. He's already signed on to three more movies. And in order for him to be on for three more movies, they ain't going to just leave it with Tom Holland. They're not trying to Batman this shit out. All right. So I'm thinking this could be finally an introduction to, if not a Miles Morales, at least a Spider-Woman, Spider-Girl. I wonder what it is the villain's going to be. But I'm excited about it. We ain't got to talk about it. I just want to go ahead and get that out there. I really want to talk more about the fact that we talk about zombie shows like Last of Us, but only until I put up that I Am Legend 2 is coming did Yaz say that she was willing to watch a zombie show. <laughs> like Yaz is Yaz complete, she just went completely wow. out of here. She lost all her. All of that shit, oh my God, I'm nightmares. But if Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan are an I Am Legend, oh, all of a sudden, zombies okay, yes. Pull up, talk to me. I mean, I saw the first one, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, it scared the shit out of me, and that's probably where my phobia of, like, you know, the whole zombies can be, like, it, it can actually happen type shit came from, probably, because I saw it, you know, as a kid. But, uh, but yeah, that's just, like, my problem with zombies is, like, you know, we got so many different, you know, things in this world that can happen. And this movie put that into speculation for me, basically. So I think this is why I can watch this. Um, and it's not so scary because that's, like, this shit can really happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, like, it's nuts. And I don't know. I just, the dog, the dog had me just, you know, oh, man, I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching it, even though. You know, there were some creepy ass scenes with those little weird things and yeah. But um, I think it's cause like they look more human. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't look all like nasty and like their face was like chewed off and like someone was eating them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my biggest thing with zombies is like they eat you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and you know, yeah. we live in, you know, times that like bath salts make people eat people. You know what I'm saying? So that shit is just scary as fuck to me i i don't know but um yeah i'll, I'll watch i'll watch this movie just because like the first one wasn't bad and i'm interested to see like the sequel it's been what 20 years since it came out so it's going to be definitely interesting to see if it's going to be worse or you know whatever if it's going to keep up with the hype i guess you can say because when they make movies 20 years later it's not always the best so that's more of reason why i kind of want to watch it is just to see if like you know it's like going to be something intriguing or it's just going to flop like all the other kind of movies have you know done like in it's day and age, so I don't know. It's it's interesting. I'll watch that. Good point. And to and to, to Yaz's credit, they're not zombies. Yeah, I imagine they're not zombies. Yeah, they're, they're like people that mutated. They're more vampires than. Yeah, exactly. And I, I I love vampire movies and shit like yeah. that, but like zombie shit, like yeah. watching the Army of the Dead. I'm not gonna lie, that movie like really got me. Like I, I had nightmares for a week after watching that shit. But my favorite part was the damn the damn tiger at the end that fucking mauled that guy that was my favorite part of that movie i was like yo this was totally worth the nightmares was watching that tiger he was a mess he was a mess. your favorite part wasn't the penis falling off of the the zombie no. <laughs> No, I'm no. right there in the room. I had, I had so many problems with the, 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 the how that movie was made. Like, how do zombies even get pregnant? They're fucking dead. How do you get pregnant? You know what I'm saying? And then, like, you know, he killed the dead baby zombie that was already dead and then killed the one. There's, I had so many questions in that movie. I'm not going to lie. I, like, saw that movie to be really dumb and very just interesting on so many levels. And just, like, this doesn't make any sense, but it, it was a good, it was an interesting watch that one was. So. Well, maybe maybe nobody explained this to you guys, but let me take that opportunity. See, yes, when a when a when a girl zombie and a and a man zombie uh, <laughs> still become acquainted, uh, uh, there's the birds and the bees. And now nah, let me stop. Uh, I, have a, <laughs> I have a I have a question birds, for Steph. The birds and the zombies. <laughs> but uh, well, once again, Tyrone will be at Caroline's, even though it's closed down. <laughs> I'll still be there. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> So, Steph, uh, as a lover of beautiful people, uh, I'm assuming that you'll be seeing this movie. My question for you is, A, are you looking forward to Michael B. Jordan starring alongside Will Smith? And the second part of my question is, do you think that I Am Legend 2 can possibly make us forget about the Will Smith slap? 
Uh, my reception is bad, so I only heard bits of what you said, but I give it five stars out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll get back to you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Back to you, Steph. Nolly, same question. Uh, and also, I'm curious about uh, the depiction of uh, the, the book and the literature version of this as, as it, and as it compares to the movie itself. Do you think that the Will Smith slap will be overshot by I Am Legend 2 having uh, Michael B. Jordan in it? Probably. I mean, you know, the ladies love him. I don't know why I do. I don't know what it does. Um, but it'll be great. I think it'll be great. People love a good horror flick. And I Am Legend, the first one was amazing. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt that the second one will be great. I'm wondering how things are going to be because they're saying that the alternate ending is canon, mm -hmm. which um, in the alternate ending, Will Smith lives. Oh, so <clears throat> we'll see probably like an advanced or... I don't know if they'll be able to cure them completely or if they'll end up being like in the book, like in the book, they're, they're vampires, but they talk. And so they would like sit outside his house and be like, come outside. I'm like, no, uh, no. So, no. <laughs> no, absolutely right. not. I don't think so. My mom said I can't talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Well, all listen. Right. As much as I want to ask all this around the board, man, I really want to get to, and I know Yaz isn't watching this, um, but we didn't get a chance to talk to Tyrone and Nolly about last week's episode, or uh, two episodes rather, of The Last of Us. And I'm really curious as to your thoughts on it. Tyrone, I personally, and we discussed this on our review sesh uh, on Monday, uh, uh, you know, while you and said other folks was out getting your party on, uh, with uh, with, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, with uh, we actually uh, was talking about the Last of Us, and what was it? What, what, what was your opinion on this on this episode? Uh, and 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 and, and uh, you know, just tell us how you felt. Yeah, uh, they don't they don't care about our feelings at all. Uh, that episode, it, it was a great episode, but damn, they do not care about letting us have a good day after watching an episode like that. Uh, <laughs> but no, it just it was it was so great. Uh, the the um, the relationship between the two brothers was uh was beautiful it was uh it, it it hit so hard like the way they're able to just like give us a new character and in a couple minutes make us care about them and then uh you know really make us fall in love with these characters and then immediately after uh make us mourn these characters it's uh it, it's it's a pretty uh it's a it's a pretty impressive skill that they have um i i, I enjoyed the episode uh, as a whole um, Ellie is loud as shit and uh, definitely needs to to calm down when she's walking down the street. Uh, stop screaming, uh, stop joking, uh, chill out for a little while. Um, and this is one of the few times where I watched the after show thing. And I just want to say, like, the actors that they got to play these two parts, uh, the the young man who is actually deaf and, you know, is uh, signing and stuff. Uh, it was it was just like a very wholesome uh, scene to watch the after show because they really uh, appeared to enjoy you know, doing the whole thing and the whole cast uh, learn sign language, uh, you know, to a certain extent to communicate with them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will say after the devastating uh, uh, finale of that episode to after the credits, watching them like smile and laugh together and everything, it it repaired me a little bit. Uh, yeah. But uh, just another the show was just killing it. Just another absolutely uh, solid and great episode. Yeah. Nolly. No, uh -oh, Nolly's getting summoned. Uh, we, we say, uh -oh, my bad. Um, I just want to say I need to know where to send my therapy bill to. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who played the game and knew what was coming, mm. Mm. still was not fucking prepared. Okay. Wow. Damn. Well, well I mean, but you knew, uh, and and. And I know that the game, I haven't gotten to this part in the game yet. I'm probably going to try to play some today if I can. But in the game, it was different because they did uh, change um, Sam's character to make him uh, hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. um, and so so I guess in the in the in the in the game, um, go ahead and spoil it. If I mean, if, if nobody else trips, um, I'm assuming that did, from what I heard and read, they it was almost the exact same scene that happened. Um, almost with, with, to a with, yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and Ty was talking about it and Steph as well earlier this week. 
how like this really it was almost a perfect episode because like tyrone says they draw you in with the relationship they add the heart of him not being able to hear which which makes them uh as it said in the after in the, in that after uh, um, um um video it it made sam more reliant on his brother so it's like if his brother isn't there how does he even really communicate without the little pad to everybody you know what i'm saying and then to add on top of that they brought they oh yes cover your ears jazz yes. okay they brought the zombies back finally like there have been two it's been like damn near two episodes since we've seen like the zombies do their thing you know what i'm saying and and they came back and didn't just come back they came back in full force even brought a bloater on that ass you know what i'm saying so Ty, i just feel like this episode was the best episode point blank period do you agree uh oh you, were you asking me? Yeah, time. <laughs> oh, hands down. Oh, there's, yeah, hands down. Hands down. Hands down. This this episode, like, I mean, I, I can't even say it any any better than what Tyrone already has said. Um, the way that they grip at your heartstrings, mm -hmm. um, that after going through what we went through in the last ten minutes of that of that episode, uh, you know, transitioning from, you know, little man getting bit to henry having to kill him to uh you know and even before that going from uh joel showing his first signs of of of, of being a human being right. uh you know what i'm saying telling telling henry hey you know if you guys want to come with us it's cool you know what i'm saying like that for that yeah. was huge for Joel to say that because right, Joel yeah. has been like this this very cautionary figure the entire show like doesn't trust anybody and is like you know always like ready to ki rather kill you than deal with you um for him to like kind of let his guard down and accept these two individuals only for them to you know little man to get bit and then Henry kill himself and then and then I I, I was going I was reeling and then the icing on the cake for me, and I, I think Tyrone probably was the same way, was when Ellie put that pad on his grave and it said, I'm sorry. Bro, I, I broke down. I, I was like, the tears was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm full on ball and snot, everything. <laughs> I had tissues. I was like, wifey was like, what's wrong? I was like, we just lost a family member. That's what's wrong. <laughs> you know, like this shit. It was like that. It I, like I felt that. I felt every bit. Of, I could not, but I was a little upset because I I really loved little Sam. I was like, even if you have to kill Henry, yeah, I'll understand as long as you <laughs> save Sam. Uh, yeah. But to kill Sam and Henry, I was like, well, damn. Just when I started to enjoy melanin on the show, uh, mm -hmm. you got swipe it and take it all away. Um, That's what it was for me. Yeah, but it was. But Sam was. That that you know, watching I also watched the after show and to see that he was really deaf in real life and yeah. to see how the entire cast, because you yeah, know me, yeah. I am an Ellie hater to the fullest and have been yeah. the entire series. I've I've felt like a bullet has been meant for her and she's been dodging that every episode. Uh, but this was the one episode that I actually was a little I was like, you know, Ellie's not so bad, you know what I'm saying? Because she you know she was the deciding factor like she was the one that that kind of convinced uh joel like oh he's just gonna say no and then i'll just keep yeah yeah <laughs> and eventually he'll change his mind like i i was like all right and then her interactions with sam was like i was like yo yo and then yeah. you could finally see and i think moving forward and i said this on the last review show i think moving forward we may see a different version of ellie I feel like this really hit her mm -hmm. where it hurts. And I feel like she really realizes the seriousness of their situation. And maybe she dumbs down a lot of the stuff that she's been doing in these last couple episodes. Tyrone, what's up, bro? Yeah, just a quick, uh, we were talking about moments. The moment that that like got me uh, in the in the fields was when she tried to uh, use her blood to save him. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh man, she has no idea. Uh, this yeah. poor girl and oh. this poor kid. But uh, yeah, so that was that was one of those moments for me. That happened in the in the game, Nelly. 
No. Okay. All right. Cool. The well, yeah, I thought really that be fucking you up. Yeah, man. Uh, well, listen, I'm glad that they've adopted this series. It's going up and up. I'm loving it. And I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Uh, we don't have too much time left. Uh, and I, I just want to add one thing to Ty, uh, to Ty's comments. It wasn't even just that he died. It was that his brother had to kill him. That was yeah. it for me. Because think yeah. about that. If your child or your brother had, had was attacking somebody, I mean, Joel held the gun up to him and he held the gun up to him. He was like, nah, you ain't finna kill my, I don't give a fuck if he is eating your little friend. <laughs> you ain't finna kill my little brother. And he had to do it himself. And damn, bro, the whole reason he was even alive is was just, I mean, he was his purpose as like, to borrow from from, yeah. from, from Bill. Um, So I mean, he had already sacrificed himself. He was already ready to give himself up. So it did make sense that he did ultimately say, look, there's no point in me going forward. The only reason I'm, I'm moving this forward is because I wanted us to take a look at this Flash trailer that we saw during the Super Bowl real quick before we go. We only got a few more minutes before we end up. And I'm curious as to what we think about it. This is a long trailer, so to speak. So let's go ahead and just get right on into it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, uh, the Flash. Let's check it out. You can go anywhere. Another timeline. Another universe. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Because this is the world where my mom lives. I'm not going to lose her again. Time has a pattern that it can't help reliving. Different people, different worlds drawn to each other with magnets. My face. So my face. If you were to go into the past, you have no idea what the consequences can be. Bruce, I could fix things. You could also destroy everything. This can't be happening here. I completely broke the universe. God, we've been waiting for you. I created a world with no metahumans. And now there's no one to defend us. Want some help? Oh! oh. You're... You are... Yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> if I can't undo what I did, if I can't get back, there might not be a future. We try not to die. It's not Clark. My name is Kara. I, I'm Barry. Well, we're Barry. Uh oh, oh, there's more. Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are gonna want to see this. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to admit something. I hadn't watched it yet. All right. Uh, I hate Ezra Miller, but oh shit, that shit looks dope. I'm not going to lie. That shit looks dope. It's got three Batman. I saw Christian. I saw um, Christian Bale's Batman with the, with the big uh, motorcycle and shit. Yo, it's got Zod. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, man, I hate you, Ezra Miller, for making me hate. The fact that you did all that dumb shit, and now I have to be torn about this movie, man. Real quick, we don't got time for all that, but I'm gonna put up a quick poster. Just let me know if you're looking forward to it. Let me know if you're like, eh, whatever, and let me know uh, if you're in the middle. So hate it, love it, or in the middle. Then we gotta go. I'm gonna take this down in three, two, one. <laughs> all right, we got, we got. 
right. Nolly's got the sideways. Yo, okay, we all over the place. We all over the place. All right, well, look, we'll have to leave it for now. And fortunately, this is the perfect lead-in to our guest next week, who is a huge DC fan. She calls herself the fanboy fighter, and that is Fantastic Frankie, who is a knowledgeable entity on all things dc and i can't wait to hear what she thinks about this but for right now guys we're gonna go ahead and call it maybe there's one for an after show we'll talk who knows red team go red team go but as we always say oh real quick and uh shout out to steph as well and uh and and you know and uh her new (laughs) (laughs) she came back just before the day Well, look, (laughs) Steph is being her authentic self. And if she wasn't being herself, she'd be fake. And like we always say, man, if you're a real geek, go ahead and let that geek flag fly. Pull up, y'all. I love the new blurred order. You should, too.